Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be part 3 on my series on Langchain Rag tutorial. Um, this video is a companion to an article that I wrote on medium.com on implementing streaming in your rag application. You'll find the link of the article in the video's description. So let's get started. Let's start by visiting the article. First thing I want to mention is that all the code examples will be available on my GitHub. This article is number three in my series of six articles. Um, the first one was a quick start guide to Langchain Rag, integrating chat history, and today we'll be uh, implementing streaming. So the article is based on a notebook published by Langchain, and which uh, describes all the different types of streaming available. So we'll go over that. And I also added a little demo on how to implement an HTML page to using FastAPI so that we can query and, and uh, demo the uh, streaming. So let me show you what is task decomposition. You'll see we get a reformulated question and the answer in streaming and also we get the context that was used to answer the question. To illustrate the streaming, I'm going to use the same rag demo that I've been using in my previous videos and article. It's a little rag demo provided by Langchain. It, it's a very straightforward example. It basically reads a blog post from Lillian Wang on agents. Um, I'm not going to detail it here in the video because I'm going over it in the article and in the previous videos. So it's the same example, very straightforward example. Okay, so before when we uh, used to call a chain, we used to call the invoke command. Okay, so if I run this cell, you'll see that before I see anything printed, the LLM has to have answered the question completely. So let's take a look. If I run this, you'll see, it'll take a few seconds, 1.9 seconds, and then everything appeared at once. With streaming, it's different. When we stream, first we need to change it for the stream uh, method and we need to use a for loop because we want to be printing the chunk as they come, okay? As soon as the LLM sends information, we want to be able to print it. So let me move this a little bit so that we can see. And see, it printed the question, printed the context, and then it printed the answer in small chunks so that our application can start printing immediately. Okay, so this in a nutshell is what uh, streaming is. Obviously, we do not want to print all this information to the user. We need to be able to only extract the information that is relevant. In this case, we only want the answer. So we can add some logic to only display the information that we want. So in our case, if I run this, you'll see it's printing the question, the context, and the answer and I can have the entire output uh, so that I see exactly the dictionary that has been produced by the LLM. In previous videos, we've talked about contextualizing our question. What does that mean? Well, when you have a RAG application, it means that if you ask a first question, basically, what is task decomposition, it's going to give me an answer. But if I have a follow-up question and I say, what are common ways of doing it? Well, the system needs to know that I'm talking about task decomposition because if I ask that question to my RAG database, there might be many vectors that could qualify to answer this question. So if I only ask what are common ways of doing it, my context will be too vague. So I need to reformulate the question to include what are common ways of doing task decomposition. We've seen that in previous videos. So we're going to re-look uh, at our example where we have a contextualized system prompt. It says, given a chat history and the latest user question, which might reference context in the chat history, formulate a standalone question which can be understood without the chat history. Do not answer the question, just reformulate it, and if needed, just return it as is. Okay, so this is the exact same example we used in the previous videos. Now, once we reformulated the question, then we need to answer the question. So when we use this type of uh, pipeline, 
we query the LLM twice. Once to reformulate the question and then twice to answer the question. So let me illustrate what I'm talking about. So let me instantiate this. Now, I have my first question. What is task decomposition? Let me clear my chat history. And then I'm just gonna call the rag chain with the invoke, I, because here I do not wanna display the, uh, uh, the streaming. I just want to have the answer and populate my chat history, okay? Then my second question is, what are common ways of doing it? But doing what? Task decomposition. So here is where I need to reformulate my question. So to do this, now in this example, I'm gonna use the A stream, the asynchronous stream, and I'm gonna use the event. I'm gonna stream the event. Now, what's nice about uh, how Langchain implemented this is, is that we can now filter on different uh, fields. We have tags, names, and types. The tag are basically, uh, we control that. With the width config, we can specify the tag name, okay, see? In this, in this uh, example, I have a tag called contextualize Q system prompt, and then I have contextualize Q chain, and now I can filter when I call uh, my uh, chain and I can say only include these. Okay, so a tag, a name, and a type. And version one is basically because link, this is in beta. Okay, you'll see it, we'll get a warning, and it's gonna change in the future so that Langchain basically is saying use version one because if we change it, we'll probably have a version two, so we won't break your code, which is nice of them, okay? So let's, let's give this a shot. So since we're uh, filtering for the output parser and the contextualized system prompt, we should only get the reformulated question. So let's run this. Now you'll see that when we use the A stream events, we get a lot more information in the stream, okay? But here, uh, all I want to illustrate is that we have filtered on the output parser. And if we scroll, we should see the tags, our tag, and type is on parser n. So the end, parser end. So we have on parser stream because it's an or, it's not an end for the filter, okay? So that's why we're getting many events. Uh, now, if we look, we have the reformulated question. So our original question was, what are common ways of doing it? And then the reformulated question is, what are some common method for task decomposition? See, it reformulated the question to include the context, and in our case, is the chat history, was, which was our previous question, okay? So, in a nutshell, when using streaming, we have some filtering capabilities. We can filter intermediate steps or filter any types of, um, of events, like on parser stream, on parser start, on prompt, and you'll see there's many of them. For example, I can filter on the retriever to only get the documents that were fetched uh, from the retriever. So the retriever was instantiated over here uh, earlier. So the retriever is in our vector store. So whenever we call the retriever, it basically returns the chunks of documents that were used to answer the question. So what if I only want to uh, receive this in my stream, then I can filter for include name retriever. So if I run this cell now, you'll see it should only display the name retriever. And basically it should give us the question, what are some common methods for task decomposition, which is the start event but I could have answered everything using only the end event. So, and then I should get also, if I, in the output, see the documents that were used to answer the question. So, streaming is, 
could be quite challenging. So what I've decided to do in the next section is to give you a um, full circle example using Fast API and a simple web page where we're going to have a form where, where we will ask the question and then we'll uh, stream the uh, reformulated question, we'll stream the answer, and we'll just display in a block the, the context. To run this demo, we're going to need two fast API endpoints. One for um, the root, where it's basically going to serve the HTML document. And the second one is the actual chat stream, where we uh, query the uh, LLM, and it streams back the answer. Okay, so if I have a question like what is task decomposition and I execute it, it's going to return the reformulated question, the context, and the answer. Okay, so as you notice in Swagger, because this interface is called Swagger, it's basically to test out your different endpoints. It's not streaming. Okay, so it displayed it as a big chunk, but You'll see once we use the uh, HTML document and the JavaScript, we'll be able to uh, illustrate the, the streaming. So we're going to have a question. We're going to submit it. It's going to call the endpoint, um, this endpoint over here. And then it's going as soon as it starts receiving the events or the streaming events, we're going to display the chunks on the web page. Here is our web page. So it's very simple HTML. It's a form with a question, a submit button, and three divs where we can display the reformulated question, the answer, and the context. So let's ask a question. Uh, what are the memory types? And if you look carefully, it's going to start streaming the reformulated question and the answer. See? So it gave me the reformulated question because that was the first call to the LLM. Then the second call was to get the context, everything that was used to answer the question, and the third was the actual answer. Okay? And everything was streamed so that the user has the impression that he is getting information right away. So that's the whole point of streaming. So now let's uh, look at the code under the hood, how this is all uh, implemented together. I created a file called main.py and I've added some modules to handle the fast API and some JSON because I'm returning the chunks um, into a dictionary. So I wanted to uh, use a JSON format. And then I'm using the RAG application provided in the uh, Langchain notebook. So nothing fancy. I've added a few tags, but that's it. And I've also changed the LLM. I've added streaming equal true. Okay. The rest is pretty much the same. And over here is where I instantiate my fast API app. And then I allow for all origins. This be careful in production. You might want to limit this to a, a specific URLs. Right now, it's just a demo. It's running locally on my machine, so there's no uh, security issues. But in production, it could. And so the first endpoint is is to serve my HTML document. It's a static web page. It's nothing fancy. Let me give you a look. Uh, it's standard HTML with Bootstrap where I'm creating a few styles and I have a form for my question and then I have uh, three divs, one for my reformulated question, the answer and the question. And then I have a JavaScript to handle the uh, streaming endpoint, to display the chunks into the proper divs, to reset uh, or to clear the, if you hit submit or, you know, to clear the output if you resubmit another question. And uh, basically, I'm checking over here if it's context, reformulated, or data. So, you know, it's the first time it's hard to put together, but once you uh, get it running, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, I mean, this is not magic. I mean, it's just HTML and JavaScript, okay? So the rest is just 
regular HTML. So let me go back to main and the second endpoint is my actual chat stream with my message. Now this is where I need to do something special. I need to return as a streaming response and I also need to supply the media type. Okay, so event stream. The rest is just like a regular fast API uh, endpoint. Okay, in my generate chat event, I'm basically um, looping on the A stream event. And as you saw earlier, it's generating tons of events. But then what I'm looking for is I'm only filtering for these tags. Okay, I could have added the filter in, in here inside the parentheses as I did in, in the uh, notebook example, but I didn't, okay? So here I'm saying if it's step three and it's main chain and it's on chat, uh, on chat model stream, then I wanna create the data chunk, which is my answer. Here it says if it's step two, main chain and contextualized queue chain, then I wanna create my reformulated chunk. And then if it's the retriever and it's an on retriever end, then it's my context, okay? And I'm sending the context back to the JavaScript, okay? Once it's done, I just print chat model as completed one response, okay? So nothing fancy, it's, you know, regular fast API stuff, no extra modules, just, you know, a plain HTML, a JavaScript, and an endpoint. So let's give it a shot. So let me call main.py. Make sure you're in the right directory when you uh, call it. It takes a few seconds and then it, it starts the HTTP server, which is Uvicorn, and it's running on the local host. So if I clear this, you can see I ask if I clear it again, you should see it. See over here, it's calling the web page. Okay. So, what are the different types of memory? If you look carefully, it's going to stream the reformulated question because that's the first call to the LLM. Then it should display the context and then it should stream the answer. Let's do it. See, what are various forms of memory? Reformulated the, que the question. It gave me the context. The context is basically the chunks from the blog post that were used to answer the question. Okay, so this is pretty good stuff um, because if you create a RAG application and you do not provide streaming, our users have the feeling that the application is slow, okay? When in fact, it's faster when you're not streaming. It's just an illusion because you start getting the information right away. But overall, the time, it takes much more time to stream an entire answer than just to uh, generate it and send it. But that's what our users want. And that's why we created this video. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, next week, I will be talking about returning the sources. Even though we did cover um, returning the context in the streaming video. In next week's video, I'm going to implement uh, some uh, advanced features like multi-querying and uh, context compression uh, to clean up the context. Because sometimes when you uh, ask the retriever for some question, not the entire context is relevant to answer the question. So context compression will clean up the context and make it smaller and more relevant to answer the question. So thank you very much for watching me. If you enjoyed my content, please take a moment to like and subscribe because this really helps the uh, YouTube algorithm to promote my uh, video. So thank you and see you next week.